Good day coders, how are we all doing today? And welcome to a brand new video where we'll be creating more awesome games. So, in this project, you'll learn how to create a game in which you have to save the Earth from space monsters. Click the green flag to start the game. Use your arrow keys to move the spaceship, uh, spaceship left and right and use the space key to shoot. Score as many points as you can by shooting the flying hippos. If you get hit by a hippo or by an orange dropped by the bat, you lose a life. So what you will learn? How to make sprites move using keyboard input. How to clone sprites to make copies of them. And how to use broadcasts and receive blocks to send a message. So, let's get right into the game. Okay, so this is the finished product of the game. As you can see, we've got our scoreboard here and our lives over on the right hand side. So if I click on the green flag, as you can see, the bat is flying and I'm using my arrow keys to move my spaceship left and right. And then I'm using the space bar to shoot out uh, lightning bolts. So the aim of this game is to get, or in this point, hit the hippos, and if you get hit by one, or by the orange that the uh, bat is dropping, then the game, or in this case, you lose a life. So I'm going to lose a life. There we go. As you see. Uh-huh. Okay, there we go. So now I have two lives, and then if I get this one dropped, I have a li uh, one life left, and if, there we go. And when you lose all three lives, the game will end with the words game over. So let's create our space invader game. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get our starter project. So in this one, we're going to go to File, then we're going to Open, then we're going to navigate to where we saved our folder. All right, so for the resources, that will be our starter world. So you're going to right click on the zip folder, and you're going to click on Extract All, and say Extract. And then it's going to copy your file. If you want your file to be on top, you can click on date modified to get the file on top. And all you need to do is just scroll up and look for catch the dots scratch two. I'm sorry, not uh, catch the dots clone wars scratch two and resources. Double click, and as you can see, we have the resources folder that, uh, in the zip folder. So we click on clone wars, and as you guys can see we have already a backstage or a backdrop we have our spaceship as well so now we're going to add a code to the spaceship sprite to make the spaceship move left if the arrow key is pressed so we're going to events we're going to drag out when green flag clicked go to control drag out the forever loop and the if statement then we go to sensing and we're going to drag out key space pressed and just change the space to left arrow using the drop down arrow. Then we go to motion and drag out change X and inside the block replace the 10 with minus 4. So now the X axis goes from the left side of the stage to the right side of the stage. This means that the spaceship moves to the left when you subtract from the value of the spaceship sprite's x position. So this code block is the part that makes your spaceship move left, which is the change x by minus 4. So now add some more code inside the forever block to make your spaceship move to the right if the right arrow key is pressed. So now for the right arrow, all you need to do is do the exact opposite of what you did with the left arrow. 
So you go to control and you drag out another if statement. Go to sensei, drag out key, change the space to right arrow, go to motion, change x, and instead of a minus 4, this will be a positive 4. So it's just 4. So now test your project by clicking the green flag and use the arrow keys to move your spaceship left and right. So we click on the green arrow and all we do is just use the arrow keys moving uh, left and the arrow keys moving right. Yes, Marcos? Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is add lightning bolt. So now you're going to give the spaceship the ability to fire lightning bolts. So add the lightning sprite from the scratch library. So we're going to click on choose a library from uh, choose a sprite from library, and all we're going to look for is lightning. So you click, make sure you're in the all category, and all we're going to do is just scroll down so that we find the lightning sprite. The lightning sprite. Here it is lightning sprite you can click click on okay so when the game starts the lightning sprite should be hidden until the spaceship fires its laser cannons so we're going to add this code to our sprite so when green flag clicked go to looks and drag out the hide block so at the moment the lightning bulb is really big compared to the spaceship below the code that the lightning sprite already has, add some blocks to make the sprite smaller and turn it upside down. So while we are in the looks tab, uh, look for set size to 100%. And instead of 100%, we're going to make it 25%. Then we go to motion and drag our point in direction 90. And instead of a 90, it will be minus 90. Now it looks like it fires pointy end first out of the spaceship if you click the if you click the green flag it will point or in this case what when we code our spaceship to fire this lightning bulb it will be uh firing in the pointy end first part of the spaceship so now we're going to add some new code to the spaceship sprite to create a new clone of the lightning bulb if the space key is pressed. So now, what we're going to need is we need to be in our spaceship. We go to events, we drag out when green flag clicked, go to control, drag out the forever loop and the if statement. Then we go to sensing and drag out key space uh, pressed, go back to control, and look for create clone of lightning. Use the drop down arrow and get lightning. So whenever the game creates a lightning sprite clone, the clone should appear and then move upwards until it reaches the top of the stage. Then the clone should disappear. So we're going to add this code to our lightning sprite so that the clone moves upwards until they touch the edge of the stage and then they get deleted so now we're going to be on our lightning sprite we're going to drag out when i start as a clone we're going to go to motion and drag out go to the go to block and instead of mouse pointer it should say spaceship then go to looks and drag out the show block Go to control and drag out repeat until sensing and if it's touching the edge. So instead of mouse pointer, it will be edge. And then we're going to change Y. Go to motion, change Y. And change Y by 10. And then right underneath the repeat until we have delete this clone. So this is the code for our lightning bolt. So press the space key to test and whether the lightning bulb moves correctly. So we click on the green flag and all we need to do is just press the space key. 
Okay. So now, what happens if you hold down the space arrow key for long? So let's say I hold it down. As you can see, multiple of lightning bulbs are shot out of the space arrow. So can we use a weight block to fix this? So we go to the spaceship. And all you need to do is just drag out a wait one second uh, block inside the create clone of lightning. And all we got to do is just see. There we go. As you can see, I'm holding down on the space key and every one second. A lightning bulb gets shot out of the spaceship. And that's how you do it. So now, the next step we need to do is space hippos. Now you're going to add lots of flying hippos that destroy, or they're going to try to destroy, your spaceship. So we're going to create a new sprite with the hippo1 image in the scratch library. Use the shrink tool to make the hippo sprite a smaller size to the spaceship sprite. So we're going to go to choose a sprite from library, and we're going to look for hippo one so that will be in the animals category and all we need to look for is hippo one hippo one here he is and we click ok then we're going to use the shrinking tool and we're going to make him relatively smaller than the spaceship that should do it so we'll now set the hippo sprites rotation style to left right so in order to set a sprite rotation style, we need to click on the blue eye next to the sprite. And then we're going to click on the rotation style we want. So here's rotation style and we want the left to right. So we click the left to right. Now, we're going to add some code to hide the hippo sprite when the game starts. So we go to events so we can click on the back arrow here. We go to events, we drag out when green flag clicked, go to looks, and drag out the hide block. Then we're going to add some code to the stage to create a new hippo clone every few seconds. So now we need to be on our stage. If we click on the stage or the backdrop, we go to events and we drag out when green flag clicked. Go to control, drag out a forever loop, and then we're going to drag out the weight block and create clone of hippo one. Now instead of it being wait one second, we're going to have pick random number, which is in the operators block. Pick random number between two, two, to four, two to four so each new hippo clone should appear at a random x position and every clone should have a random speed so now we need to create a new variable called speed that is the hippo sprite only so we're going to click on our hippo and we go to data click on make a variable and type there speed and say we're going to make this For all sprites, speed. So now, when you've done this correctly, the variable has the name of the sprite next to it. So in this case, if let's say you've done this incorrectly, all you need to do is right click on speed and say rename variable and you say OK, or you can right click and say delete variable and say OK. Then you come again to make a variable, type the speed and say for this sprite only so that hippo one semicolon speed is the title so when each hippo clones starts pick a random speed and a starting place for it then show the clone on the screen so we go to events uh, we go to control sorry guys we go to control and drag out when i start as a clone we go to data and say set speed to 
pick random, which is an operator. All right. So in the operators block, we need to take out the pick random, and then we're going to type there two to four to four. Then we're going to go to motion and drag out the go to X and Y block. And in the first block, we need to be in the operators and drag out the pick random. And in the first one, it's going to be minus 220 to 220 to 20. And the Y value is 150, 150. So test your code, does a new hippo appear every few seconds? So we're going to click on the green flag and just see if our hippo appears on our stage. No, it does not. The hippo does not appear on our stage. So we need to check on the stage group and see if we have coded this correctly. So right here we've got pick random two to four. We have the hide for our hippo. All right, and then we have our speed. Then we have when I start as a clone. Oh, I see what I've missed. I've missed the show block, guys. I've missed the show block, which is in the looks. Show, it has to show itself. So let's click on the green flag and see if our beautiful hippos that want to destroy us. So at the moment, we I see multiple. I see two. And I see three. Okay, perfect. So now, at the moment, the hippos don't move. So each hippo should move around randomly until it gets hit by a lightning bolt. To make that happen, attach this code below the blocks that are already in the hippo sprite code script. So this will be on this one. We are on hippo, so we go to control and drag out the repeat until. Then we go to sensing and say touching lightning. Touching lightning. Then we go to motion and drag out move, the move block. Go to data and drag out speed so it says move speed steps go back to motion and drag out the turn degrees clockwise go to operators pick random between minus 10 minus 10 and 10 degrees and if on edge it must bounce if on edge bounce and then delete this clone delete this clone so now we need to test our code again you should see a new hippo clone appear every few seconds and each clone should move at a different uh different speed so we click on the green flag and we see if they move not really so this code should be in the show blocks code in the show or when I start as a clone code so we click on the green flag and let's see there we go there we go so now there there we go is two three and they are all moving in different directions at different speed you can see clearly this one is going a little slow the other one is going really fast so on and so on there we go so now, test the spaceship's laser cannon. If a lightning bolt hits a hippo, does the hippo vanish? So we click again on the green flag, and then all we need to do is just see if we can hit. Uh-huh. 
it disappears it disappears perfect so now we can go back to spaceship and we can just delete the wait one second block because we currently do not need it then when a hippo touches your spaceship the spaceship should explode so select the spaceship sprite and rename its costume to normal so we go to the costume tab and rename our spaceship a to normal spaceship a to normal then we're going to draw another costume of an exploding spaceship and call the new costume hit so we need to delete spaceship b and click on choose a costume and all we need to do is just something find something that resembles an explosion so it could be the sun so we're gonna scroll down and look for a costume that re resembles that the spaceship has exploded the best one would be the sun the sun if i can there we go here he is the sun so we click on sun and say okay now obviously the sun is happy so now if you don't want to draw the explosion you just want to click one that is like the sun then we're going to use a color shape or color a shape tool to change the costumes color and face so we're going to click on color a shape which is the full tool and all we need to do is just color it yellow over here and even the mouth there we go like that so that the face is not there smiley face is not there it's just a nice explosion and then we rename this to hit rename the costume to hit so we have normal and we have hit then we're going to add some code to our spaceship sprite so that it displays the normal costume when the game starts and switches to the hit costume when it touches the hippo so go to events and drag out when green flag clicked go to looks drag out switch costume to normal so it's the first one is normal then we go to control and drag out the wait until sensing touching hippo hippo one then it should change or switch costume to hit test your code make sure the spaceship collides with the hippo does the space ship change to the hit costume so we click the green flag and we just wait for our hippo to come down he's going relatively slow here's one that's going really fast and all we need to do there we go so it does change to the hit costume so now when the spaceship explodes all the hippos should disappear so that the game or the players of the game can recover so we need to add a code to the spaceship sprite to make it broadcast the message hit when the spaceship touches a hippo so all we need to do is just go to events and drag out broadcast click on the drop down arrow and choose new message and just type the hit click on ok all of the hippo sprite clones will receive the hit message and you can instruct them to disappear when the spaceship is hit by adding this code to the hippo sprite so we go to hippo and we drag out when i receive hit go to control and drag out delete this clone so to check whether the new code works click the green flag and make the spaceship collide with the hippo so we click the green flag and all we need to do is just wait for hippo to crash with our spaceship there we go after the spaceship explodes new hippo clones appear but the spaceship is still exploded so this spaceship needs to reset itself after being hit so now add a wait block at the end of the spaceship sprites code to create a small pause before hippos begin to appear again then add a forever block 
around all of this code to make the code run repeatedly. So we go to our spaceship, we drag out the wait one second, and we drag out our forever loop so that we or our spaceship has the time to recuperate. So we click the green flag to test our project. All right, so here comes a hippo. I'm going to go for the one that's going fast. Okay, there we go. Voila, it gives us one second to recover and it goes back to our spaceship costume. So now at the moment, you can play the game forever, but it doesn't count how many hippos you shoot or how many times your spaceship explodes. So now we're going to create a lives variable, a score variable, and even a high score variable. So we're going to go to data and say make a variable and type their lives for all sprites. Make another variable called score for all sprites. So the hippo speed, we can, where's the speed? We can click on the tick so that we can hide it off the stage. So we can have lives at the top left hand side and we can have score on the top right hand side. And for safety measures we don't really need a high score to be shown there so we can just make a variable called high score for all sprites but click on the tick so that it doesn't appear on the screen so now all we need to do is say if for our spaceship if we get if we get to hit one of the uh hippos it should you know give us a point for every hippo we hit so let's go to the space bat or let's get ourselves a space bat so to make your game a bit harder you're going to create a bat that throws oranges at the spaceship so let's go to new sprite get bat one and say okay all right so we have the bat one as our sprite here we go now we're going to set the rotation style to left and right as well so we click on the big eye go to rotation style and click left and right or left to right then we're going to make the bat sprite move from left to right at the top of the stage uh the stage backdrop <laughs> there we go stage backdrop so now we're going to go to events we drag out when green flag clicked go to control drag out the forever loop go to motion drag out the move 10 steps and if on edge bounce if on edge bounce so all you need to do is just test out our code and see there we go. So now our costume or our bat is a little big. So we need to use the shrinking tool to make him small. There we go. So if you look at the best bat's costume, sorry, bat's costume, we've got bat A and bat B. You can see that it has two different ones. So we need to use the next costume block to make the bat flap its wings as it moves. So we're going to change bat 1a to wings up. So wings up. And then here wings down. Okay. So after the bat has moved, it should show the next costume and then the wait for a short time. So we go to script. We go to looks. We say next costume and say control and then wait 0 0.3 seconds so now make the bat throw oranges so we're going to add an orange sprite from the library scratch so we're going to choose a library uh, choose a sprite from the library and we're going to look for orange so that should be by o or we can use the the category let's say things and then look for orange 
All right, here we go. Orange, not orange two, orange. And we can say, okay. Okay, so now we need to add a code to the bat so that when the green flag is clicked, the bat sprite should wait for a random length of uh, time between five to 10 seconds, then create a clone of the orange sprite. So we click on our bat, we go to events, we drag out when green flag clicked, go to control, drag out the forever loop, the wait block, and create clone of orange. Create clone of orange. So we go to operators and replace the one with pick random. So it has to pick random between 5 and 10 seconds. So now add code to the orange to make each of its clone drop, starting from the bat sprite and falling towards the bottom of the stage. So we go to our orange. We go to events. When green flag clicked, it should be hidden. So we go to looks and drag out the hide block. Go to control and drag out when I start as a clone. Motion. Go to bat1. Instead of a mouse pointer, go to bat1. Then it should show. Then we should go to the control and get out the repeat until sensing instead of touching mouse pointer we use the drop down to get edge touching edge change y change y by minus four and then delete this clone delete this clone so now add some more code to the orange sprite so that when an orange clone hits the space sprite the clone also disappears to give the player a chance to recover. So we go to events and drag out when I receive hit, delete this clone. Modify the code of your spaceship sprite so that the sprite is hit when it touches a hippo sprite or a orange sprite. So where it says wait until we should have, we can drag out the touching hippo sensing block. Go to operators and get the or block. So if it's touching hippo or touching, let's just bring this down here, touching orange, then our sprite can recuperate. So we test the game and see what happens if the spaceship gets hit by the orange or the flying orange. So we need to drag our bat up here to be at the top then we're going to click the green flag and as you can see we have there we go boom there we go perfect so we've tested that the hippo can crash onto the spaceship and the orange can crash onto the spaceship but now the game needs a game over message at the end of the game so if you haven't already create a new variable called lives so we've got data we've got lives and we've got score so your spaceship should start with three lives and lose a life whenever it touches a hippo or an orange your game should stop when the lives run out so we're going to draw a new sprite called game over using the text uh, text tool so we're going to click on the paint new sprite we're going to type here game over for our costume and we're going to click on the eye here to also rename our sprite to game over then we're going to use the text tool, which is this text tool. We click on our uh, page here, our bitmap mode. We can have red, maybe if you want, a red color. We can choose the font as well. Let's choose mystery. We click inside and we type the game over. From there, we can resize 
there we go as you see we are resizing using the corners the corners right here are to resize your text as you can see there we go then we're going to click on sprites there we go to stage and we're going to broadcast a message called game over just before the game ends so we go to events broadcast and wait broadcast and wait so we click on new message and type the game over and wait so add this code to your game over sprite so that it shows at the end of the game so we click on game over so we drag out when green flag clicked it should be hidden and when i receive game over it should show because you've used a broadcast game over and wait block on your stage the stage will wait for the game sprite to be displayed before the or before ending the game so we test your game how many points can you score if the game is too easy or too hard can you think of ways to improve it so for us to improve our scoring we need to make sure that we have three lives over here and a scoreboard right over here all right so the improvements we can do on this game is that we can go to the stage and we can say when green flag is clicked it should set our lives so we go to data set lives to three and then set score not high school score to zero and then we can have the wait until drag out by control wait until lives which is in data lives go, first go to operators and get the greater than go to data drag out lives is greater to one and there we go so this will set our score to zero and set our lives to three then we go to the spaceship and have the change lives on change lives here we go change we drag it here change lives by minus one if we get hit by minus one and then we can go to our hippo and have inside the hippo change score by 10 change score change score by 10 so this means for every hippo that you hit you get 10 points and as you guys can see we have come to the end of our game we can uh, drag this broadcast inside the game uh, inside this forever block now we can click on the green flag we can drag our bat here on top so, so we click on all right so we play the game now All right, now we have come to the end of our game. As you can see, we click on the view full screen, we click on green flag, and now all we need to do is now play the game and see how many points can we score. Okay, I've scored 10, I've hit a hippo. Ooh, this hippo's coming close. There we go, 20, 30, 40 and so on and so forth all right so thanks for your time please visit us at www.pingacademy.co.za where we will continue making awesome games like the one you just done see you soon guys